Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So the linebacker spot is another spot that a lot of people are concerned about. A lot of people want Michael Parsons, and I can understand that. A lot of people, you know, will want to trade back and get a JOK or something. But I like those players. I think they're good players. I think they're worth those picks. You know, Michael Parsons with the 11th pick, JOK trading back and getting, you know, maybe back at three or four spots and getting. I think both of them are worth those picks, no problem. But there are a lot of great linebackers in this class. And I think more value is probably at the end of the first round and in the second round and some even in the third round. So I think there's a lot of value there at the linebacker position and guys that will help us with what we need next to Blake Martinez more than a Michael Parsons, who's not the best in coverage, but you can use him as kind of a pass rusher in some situations. JOK, I like his pass coverage a lot, but he might be someone that is a little bit too small for the NFL as a linebacker. I don't know, but that's that's just a little bit of a concern because sometimes I see him get blocked by wide receivers on tape, and you don't really want your linebackers getting blocked by receivers. So would I really want to spend a first-round pick on that guy? I don't know, especially a top 15 pick when there's going to be other elite players on the board. But I do think that Owusu Koromoa is an elite talent. But moving on, in this second and third round, I'm going to cover five linebackers that I think will be great value at our picks. And if they're there, I would strongly consider pulling the trigger on them. So the first one is Jameen Davis. And he's a guy who shot up board so quick. He was like a fourth, fifth round pick. And all of a sudden, you know, in a couple of weeks, Brett Coleman, the YouTuber, makes a video. Jameen Davis shoots up draft boards. Now he, you know, he runs at his pro day and he shoots up boards even more. And some people are calling him a top 20 pick now. So I don't know if that'll hold, but if he goes back to planet Earth, if he's, you know, if his stock falls back down a little bit after people look back at the tape, he will be there in the second round. I think that will be great value. The guy's 6'4", 234. He ran a 4'3", at his pro day. Now, a lot of these pro day times are a little, you know, a little suspect. And some people clocked him at 4'4", but nonetheless, the dude is fast. The dude is an athlete. You see that on tape. Um, he is really good in coverage. I mean, especially in, in man coverage because he's able to change directions at a really good he's really able to change directions at a high level uh he's very instinctive he has a grasp of the linebacker position everybody on this list that i'm going to name i think have a they all have a better grasp of the linebacker position and everything that goes along with it than a michael parsons even jok i think has better instincts and, and you know recognition than michael parsons but michael parsons ceiling is just so high but um he's got great instincts but I don't always see that speed on tape, especially in the run game. Sometimes if he has a gap, he'll, he'll shoot through. But um, in the past game, I have seen him run with guys like Kyle Pitts. So it shows up sometimes, but it doesn't show up as consistently as I would like it to. Uh, so that's something to note. Also, when you look at his 2019 tape, you don't really see, you don't really see a guy who's a first round pick. And he's a guy that didn't get a ton of playing time in 2019. This was really his breakout season in 2020. So it's really working off for one year. So that's something to keep note of. But if Jameen Davis is there in the second round, he's someone that I would, very, I would really consider. Nick Bolton is another guy who I thought would be gone in the first round. But it seems like now on draft boards, he started out in the first round. Now he's there, you know, in the second, third round for some guys. Some draft boards are pushing him down a lot. Uh, you know, in the 70s, which is ridiculous to me. I still think he's a first round backer. His tape hasn't changed. When I watch his tape, it, it's fun to watch. It, it's an exciting thing to watch because he's, he's such a good player, in my opinion. Uh, he, he's, he's six foot, 231. He ran a 459. And that doesn't concern me at all because when I look on his tape, I mean, first off, if you're a linebacker and you're running a 4 5, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and on his tape, he's decisive. 
He's got instincts. He is an explosive linebacker. He's not someone that I guess is going to run a fast 40 or cover someone down the seams 40 yards that's running a 4-4-4-3. But Nick Bolton is going to be someone who is going to be decisive in the run game. And if he doesn't get blocked, and you know, you more, more than often he's able to shoot gaps and make big plays. He just brings a lot of energy. And I think he's a first-round player. I think he's a first-round player. He's my my number three linebacker after JOK and Parsons. He's my number three guy. And I think he's good enough in pass coverage from what I've seen in zone coverage. Now, these other guys might be a little bit better in man because they have that high-end speed. But I think he's good enough in zone and good enough against the run to where he warrants a first-round pick. And, I mean, the, the only thing that's wrong with Nick Bolton is, is sometimes when he gets caught on blocks, sometimes he just gets caught. And that might just be something that you have to deal with with these new linebackers that are around six foot 230. You've got some freaks that just are able to get off blocks, even at a small weight. But Nick Bolton sometimes can get caught on blocks. So that's the only thing that I would say I don't like about his game. And then moving on to Chaz Surratt uh, from UNC. He's a guy that's 6'3", 230. He ran a 4'7", and paid no attention to that 40 time because if you see Surratt, all you see on tape is speed and explosion, hard hitting. I mean, talk about a tone setter. If this dude was next to Blake Martinez, he's good enough in coverage. He's, I mean, when you see him on the field, he's athletic. He moves fast, so I don't, the 4'7 doesn't really matter to me. Um, but just the physicality he plays with, the the I mean, we talk about setting the tone. I already said that, but this dude really sets the tone. He hits people, you know, with 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 true meaning behind it. He he plays the run. He just does everything that you want out of a linebacker. I wouldn't say he's an elite athlete. That's probably why he's not a first round pick. But a lot of people had him as a third round pick. But I think at the end of the day, he's going to be going down as probably a second round pick, maybe in the middle of the second round. Um, he's an option in the second round or the third round for the Giants. And I will be happy wherever we got him. I just think he's one of those guys who are going to be a plug and play starter. He's going to be a guy who can do pretty much everything for you. And he's possibly someone who could play replace Martinez down the road. And, uh, because he's not the best pass coverage guy, but he's a guy who, you know, who, who's going to be solid in it. And then with Jabril Cox, uh, Jabril Cox, first off, is someone who's so versatile. 6'4", 231. Uh, he didn't get to run a 40 at the pro day. I think he was dealing with an injury. Uh, so he, he didn't get to run that, but he was projecting that he would run a low 4'5 to 4'4. So if you just count how these pro days have been going, he probably would have ran a 4'39, probably would have ran a 4'4'2. Who knows? But didn't get to run that 40. But this guy, Jabril Cox, I'll sum it up for you. He's a coverage guy. He played coverage in the slot. He played a little bit of like box safety kind of coverage. He played linebacker coverage. He carried tight ends. He's a cover linebacker. That is his thing. That is his job. That was his role. And he did it at a high level. He did it at a consistently high level. And I would think that he's the best coverage linebacker in this draft. I mean, him, JOK, uh, Jameen Davis, maybe out of those three, I would say are the, the top coverage guys as far as man uh, Jameen Davis probably needs a little bit of work in zone coverage, but as far as man coverage and zone coverage, Jabril Cox probably takes the cake hands down. He is very athletic, uh, but he's not the best in the run because, I mean, he's 6'4", 230, so he's got a little bit more weight on, he's got a little bit more height on him than some of these guys that are 230, so it, it shows up on tape that he's not the best against blocks, but he is a lot bigger than uh, Owusu Koromoa. So I think some of that can be taught, and he, he just has to get a little bit better, get a little bit more experience fighting off blocks in the NFL. But if he can be protected on our line with, I mean, big Danny Shelton, big Dexter Lawrence, and then Leonard Williams up there, he's going to be protected and be able to make those plays at the second level, be able to cover and do his thing. Um, there's a, a ton of guys we have on our defense that can play his role. I mean, Jabril Peppers. There's a ton of guys who are kind of that hybrid, um, you know, linebacker coverage guy. And Jabril Cox could kind of, he would kind of bring, you know, an extra DB onto the field. 
if you decided for some reason you wanted to take Blake Martinez off the field on third downs or, you know, in dime situations, you can have a situation where Jabril Cox is your only linebacker on the field. And then on top of that, you have Jabril Peppers in the box and some of these other guys. And you basically have all DBs on the field. And I, I think that will be very attractive if you wanted a guy who can strictly be great in coverage. Jabril Cox is your guy. So my last guy on this list is Cam McGrone. He's 6'1", 236 out of University of Michigan. Uh, ran a 4'4", 3 at his pro day. Very athletic dude. Very physical dude. Uh, plays very fast. I like that he, you know, he doesn't really hesitate when he plays. This is a guy who I think will be available in the third round. I wouldn't be surprised if he shoots up boards and ends up in the end of the second. But I think he'll be there in the third round. Um, I wouldn't say he's the best linebacker in coverage, but I think his athleticism gives you a chance to kind of mold him into a coverage guy. Uh, he does have those raw instincts, at least in the run game so far. He's only had 15 starts, so he's still growing into the player that he's going to end up being. Uh, but he shows a lot of promise. I, I think he can really, you know, blossom into a, I think he could be a starter day one. I think he can definitely be a starter day one and just blossom into an athletic sideline to sideline, you know, run stopping, covering, just, you know, I think he's going to, first off, I think he'll be able to excel day one in man coverage. Uh, just, just as most of these, you know, fast athletic guys, uh, the zone coverage, of course, he'll need some more experience, but Cam McGrone is probably my biggest sleeper in this draft at linebacker because he just consistently doesn't shoot up boards. People have guys like Pete Werner over top of him. I don't understand that. Uh, so Cam McGrone is someone that you guys should definitely look out for. And that's going to wrap up this list. So you guys let me know which one of these linebackers that you'd like to target day two. Would you rather take a linebacker uh, day one and go with uh, Owusu Koromoa or Michael Parsons? Let me know down in the comments. And until then, I mean, we're going to have some more stuff coming out. There's going to be some film sessions going up for members only today. That'll be available for everybody else soon. And other than that, we got a wide receiver video, second, third round coming out. Maybe some guys in the fourth round because this class is pretty deep coming out real soon. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell and listen. I make all kinds of content for NFL teams, so if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know, and have a good one.